Good morning. Uh, this is lecture number two for chapter number one. Um, we will be doing this pretty quick today. Um, we're going to focus in on the Columbian Exchange uh, a little bit more. There's a graphic if you're on your PowerPoint following along that shows you know the Columbian Exchange of items that came between the New World and the Old World. Um, pretty good graph if you look at it. It really breaks down. There's a, quite a few things uh, that we often don't think about coming to the New World. Now, moving on here, uh, now gold and silver started to pour out of Mexico and Peru back to Spain. And Spain's going to become one of the richest countries, if not the richest country, in the world at this point. Now, there's a video here, a crash course video, Natives and Spaniards. Uh, I highly encourage you to watch it, give you some good conceptual stuff. We're not going to watch it um, at this point during the course of the class. I'll put it on. You can watch it on your own. But it's a really good uh, information there. Now the Spanish Empire. Spain had created a vast empire by the mid-16th century. Uh, Spain's empire exceeded the size of the Roman Empire of the ancient world and centered out of Mexico City in the New World. Mexico City will be the heartbeat of the Spanish Empire. Now, governing Spanish America will not be easy. In theory, it reflected the absolutism of the newly unified nation at home. The monarchs are ahead and below them subordinates and a hierarchy. Now, extended down to the viceroys of Mexico and Peru, so basically, the viceroys were the governors or the, the hand-appointed leaders of these parts of the New World from the king and queen. They were, in short, a, an extension of the monarchy. Also with this came the Catholic Church, who had unlimited power in the New World uh, because the monarchs were devout Catholics and they wanted to, uh, part of their good Christian and Catholic belief was to advance the gospel as they saw fit. And thus the king, the, the king and queen allowed the Catholic Church great authority. Kings kept elected assemblies out of Spain's New World Empire, unlike the, the, the French and the British model will come later. Royal officials were generally from Spain and not Creoles or Creoles, those born in the New World. So, you wanted to, the most powerful people in the New World for the Spanish were native Spaniards from Spain. Those that were born in the New World, thus the children of conquistadors or Spanish, they were called Creoles and thus did not have the full benefits that their ancestors had back in Europe. Now you can see here, if you look at this map that's on the PowerPoint slide, it shows you the vastness of Spain's empire, very, very large. Um, the, uh, the Portuguese, um, the Pope's going to step in and make what's called uh, a line, um, basically called the Treaty of the West. Everything west is Spanish, everything east is Portuguese. Well, lo and behold, that was a terrible way to break it up because the Portuguese are going to get a sliver of Brazil. And that's why the Brazilians speak Dutch, or uh, Portuguese, not Dutch, I mean Portuguese. And uh, the Spanish are really going to benefit heavily from this. But in either case, you can see the Spanish territory. Spanish Empire 2 slide. Colonists in the Indians in South America, despite decline, there was no real need for Amer African slave labor in the New World. Uh, the Spaniards will use Indians instead, though it wasn't like the slavery model that was with the Indians, they were still treated pretty harshly. Social advancement drew numerous colonists. This was the first opportunity for many of these lower Spaniards to advance up. Indians always outnumbered European colonists, and the Indians could win their freedom. And they also did have a lot of rights, not rights that we'd often think of as being full, but they did have more rights than we'll say, for example, African slaves later uh, in the Americas. Spanish government finally approved uh, in intermixing of locals and Spanish to marry, they're going to call mezios or mixed origin, um, and they will have more rights uh, as as the time goes on. Initially, obviously limited, but they will grant more and more as they become a much more common group of people. Basically, the Spanish didn't bring a lot of women over. The men were lonely. You view the map. They had children. Please dismiss band members for the picture. Sorry, we have picture day today. Now, justifications for conquest. Uh, expected, this is uh, Spanish Empire number three, expected locals to embrace the new traditions of belief, history views, and violence in Europe. They copied the European model of conquest and violence. Pope Alexander VI divided the non-Christian world between Spain and Portugal, Brazil, as we talked about that treaty of, I think it's Tortolesias or something like that. Uh, religious colonizations, the old Jews and Muslims were excluded. You're also going to have what's called the Protestant Reformation in Europe, and so there's going to be a lot of uh, Protestants that are going to be fleeing Europe because of the crackdown that the Catholic Church is going to try to impose on them. With that being said, the Spanish Empire is going to go to great lengths to keep them out. 
primary goal was to save the Indian souls as well. In 1537, Pope Paul III outlawed Indians enslavement, and thus the slave enslavement of Indians should come to an end. It mostly did. Bartolomé de Calacasas wrote a very brief account of the destruction of the Indies, denounced Spain for causing the death of millions of innocent people. Um, however, he suggested importing uh, slaves from Africa would help protect Indians. So he was even flawed in his belief. But you can see the Spanish are going to go through a series of reforms here, uh, though they're not overly necessarily successful. Spanish Empire number four. Reforming the empire in 1542 helped largely because of La Casa's efforts and his publications. Indians were no longer to be enslaved. The Incomadia system was abolished. Locals granted authority over Indians, replaced with a repartimentio system, which remained largely free but required. Uh, basically, the Indians are going to be free and they're going to be required to do so much labor per year to basically pay off a tax. Treatment Indians improved over time somewhat. Now, what La Casa's writings are going to do is going to create what's called the Black Legend. The image of Spain is uniquely brutal and explorative colonizer that's also referred to the Inquisition and their secretive rituals and institutions or functions. So essentially what you have is the Spanish Inquisition goes back to Europe in the 1300s. From that, you're going to have a lot of rumors and legends about mass killings and burning at the stake. Basically all the Catholic Church was trying to do was purify the religion and get rid of uh, what they deemed uh, inappropriate or wrong doctrines. That being said, there's obviously going to be some misconceptions. There will be people burned at the stake. But uh, as I learned in my Inquisition class, uh, the Inquisition actually didn't kill as many people as many might think. And especially in the New World, where our focus is here is the black legend, what the Inquisition did, because the Inquisition came to the New World, was more focused on saving people's souls and then from reverting back to what they deemed as improper practices. So often, the Inquisition got entangled with that, uh, though it may not be completely accurate. In the New World, it was more definitely about souls. The Old World, you can make the argument they were stealing land from Jews, Muslims, etc. Uh, but in the New World, is a lot different context. Now, moving on to Spanish Empire number five, exploring North America. And this has a direct impact here of us in Missouri. The first canal colony was um, on the island of Puerto Rico, now a U.S. Commonwealth. Uh, actually, let me back up. I was thinking of the French exploration. We're not to the French yet, but either case, it still has a deep impact on American history. Sorry for that error right there. Now, exploring North America, the first was Puerto Rico, now U.S. Commonwealth. Juan, Pellet, Juan Ponce de Leon was searching for the Fountain of Youth, never found it. He obviously died. Uh, if you go to Florida, do not go to the Fountain of Youth uh, Park. It is a tourist trap and exam, and you can drink the little dirty water they have that sits from the Fountain of Youth. Gross. But, uh, Hernan de Soto, Casba de Vaca, and Coronado explored the southwest. Coronado is where Colorado gets its name. Pacific Northwest, De Soto was particularly brutal. Little remained of the societies he encountered from either disease or just straight up killing them. Spain and Florida in the southwest, Philip II in 1565 ordered a military outpost be created what will later become known as St. Augustine, Florida. Now, Florida failed, failed to attract settlers and then it will be sold later, many years later, um, eventually to the United States of all places. Now, slow to move into the Southwest, they will establish Santa Fe, and if you've been to the uh, American Southwest, it's a very hard land to travel. That's hence why they blew up all the nuclear bombs there for years. It's very remote, very hard to travel, not the best places to be. If you look at this map on the PowerPoint show, it's slideshow, it shows you really how far the Spanish did. And the Spanish did get all the way up into, uh, especially Coronado, all the way up into central Kansas. So the Spanish were, were actually pretty close to coming to our area, um, but not directly. That will be way later with the French. Now, the, the Pueblo Levote, which is Spanish Empire number six slide, uh, Pueblo Indians' relations with the Spanish deteriorated. Initially, they had been success. They were tired of persecution, relentless attempts to convert to Catholicism and they united to the disbelief of the Spanish. So the, these Pueblo Indians will unite, and it's called the Pueblo Revolt. In 1680, a guy named Pope led a revolt that resulted in the expulsion of settlers in the region, meaning they were going to kick out the Spanish. By the 1690s, Spain reconquered the area, learned a valuable lesson, became more tolerant towards traditional uh, religious practices in India. So basically, the Spanish will be kicked out by the revolt, the Spanish will come back and retake the area, but they're going to be way more tolerant and not be cracking down as much. The French and the Dutch Empire. Um, others want a peace. So by the 1580s, 1560s, 1580s, other European empires are going to want a piece of the pie that's going on in the New World. Spain's precious metal gained from the New World inspired others to match. The French colonization will be the first to really rival it. 
Uh, they're going to launch explorations, but they're going to focus more on the no north. Samuel de Champlain founded Quebec in 1608. Jacques Marquette and Louis Joliet located the Mississippi River, and those are the ones that the French will come down the Mississippi River and actually be very close to modern Missouri and St. Louis, and hence why a lot of like St. Louis, St. Louis gets its name from a French king. France had a large area, but always viewed as cold and filled with savage Indians and very, very remote and hard to govern. So the French, are they're not going to be near as oppressive to the locals either. New France and the Indians, small white population on emphasis of fur trading working if the Indians depended on friendly relation of Indians, and the Indians actually embraced it for somewhat. They treated it much more friendly and respectful. They still brought diseases which were devastating the Indians. Uh, introduced Indians to new goods and items to help with hunting and cooking. Uh, you will have the metas, which will be the mixed origin of French and Indian. Once again, the French didn't bring a lot of women. French men were lonely, intermarried, or uh, fathered children of Native American women. Um, I, one of the more famous stories you can remember is Sacagawea and her French trader husband, who will, uh, will, will be married and have children later on. You can see here the, the French came into basically, you know, the Central Plains, Ohio River Valley in Canada. Um, had a large area that we um, call home today or we, we travel on a routine basis. Uh, the Dutch Empire. Um, Henry Hudson, an Englishman who employed the Dutch East Indian Company, sailed into New York Harbor searching for a northwest passage in 1609, which is way up north. But he planted the seeds of what would eventually become a great metropolis, New York City, uh, in which he sailed in later. Uh, or he sailed in the New York Harbor. Obviously, I was getting got a little confused there. He did go to Hudson Bay, which is his name for it, but he did sail to New York Harbor and helped found what will become New Amsterdam, um, which will eventually become a British colony renamed New York. In 1624, Dutch West India Company settled Manhattan Island. The Dutch were the, f were the first most shipping banking center of the early 17th century. They were kind of the FedEx uh, of the day, hence why the British will cut them out later on, and we'll get to that later. Uh, the Dutch in religious toleration, they were more tolerant than Europeans, but were not that tolerant. No one was forced to attend official church. Official church was the Dutch Reformed Church, a product of the Protestant Reformation. They denied Jews, Quakers, and Lutherans. They saw them as a threat. So they were more tolerant, but they still uh, were not that um, open. French and Dutch settlement settling a, the new, a new Netherlands. Well, out, of, out of a million settlers in the 17th century, the Dutch only sent 9,000. So, nine, so we'll say one million settlers that came to the New World only 9,000 were new that were, were Dutch and went to New Netherlands. Not very many. Uh, features of European settlement or European settlement: Dutch came to trade, not conquer. Determined to treat the Indians fairly, similar to the French. Still, conflict arose. They were required to tribes to make payments to the borderlands and empire and early uh, or borderlands in early America. Borderlands, according to one historian, is a meeting place where people's geographical and cultural borders are not clearly defined. So, if you look through all of this. As the colonization happens by Europeans, there's a lot of borderlands with not true borders. Borders were always unstable and fought over control of areas. All brought Christianity new forms of technology, systems, economic system, wealth creation. The Spanish were different than the British, the British were different than the French, and we're going to get to the British more later. Uh, but they all were uniquely different. They also brought savage warfare and widespread disease. Um, they all happened. This all happened before the English even really got their foot in the door. So the Dutch, the French, and the Spanish really kind of carve up the New World a lot before the, the British are there. The British are a little bit late to the game, but the biggest impact later on will be the British, uh, um, not uh, the French or the Spanish. But we'll get to that more later. This concludes Chapter 1. I know this was a whirlwind. I've got Chapter 1 done in two, two uh, videos. Um, if you have questions, please feel free to ask. Refer to Chapter 1 PowerPoint. Um, dealing with this first chapter in the book. Uh, if you go onto the website, it's there, clearly marked. Uh, chapter one, New World, introduction, good stuff. Uh, and as the meme, I always like to end up a meme. If you look at that meme that says, Jim Kung, Kim Jong-un, it says, do we, did we do anything while I was gone? No, we, we, were, we stopped, we, no, we stopped class to mourn your absence, which is a fun play on, you know, Kim Jong-un doesn't do anything without being watched all the time. So have a great day. Um, we'll see you back for Unit 2.